Today on the channel I am talking about Ardrapila and this is actually the first in a new series of videos about setting up an Ardrapila based drone from scratch. Now in this series I'm going to take you through all of the steps you need to do to get yourself up and running with Ardrapila on an autopilot. Now for this series I'm actually going to base it off a DJI F550 hexcopter frame. We're going to be using a Cube Orange autopilot and we're going to take a look at connecting that up on the frame and what power system I've got set up on that. We're going to take a deep delve into the new options around using multiple CAN based GPS as well as CAN based compasses. We're going to take a look at the radio system setting up with Hearlink as well as traditional radios such as the Tyrannis. We're going to look at external other sensors such as setting up the external barrow sensor on the Hear 2 as well. And at the end of this series we're going to take a little bit of a dive into the new Lua scripting features that have been added to Ardra Pilot as well. Now this is the first video in that series and in this one I'm going to give you guys an overview of the frame setup and the power setup that I have done. Now I'm not going to go th right through setting up the motors on each arms but what we're going to dive into is mounting the flight controller on the frame and some things you need to be aware of on that, the motor ordering in Ardrapilot as well as my power setup as well. Then in the next videos we will take a look at each of the individual accessories and components that we're adding as time goes along. And at the end of the series, we'll actually get this aircraft in the air and I'll talk you through some of the setup for that, as well as doing the configuration and all of the tuning around the PRAMs and the PIDs as well. And we'll be diving in and out of Mission Planner throughout the series as well as we're doing it. So if this is something you're going to be interested in, please do hit that subscribe button. I will also be putting these into a separate playlist as well. Anyway, that's it for the beginning of this one. The first thing we're going to do is talk about the the basic setup that I have got here and then in the next video we're going to talk about compasses. So let's take a look at what I've actually done on the frame. If you find this video helpful please do consider subscribing to the channel. There is a button in the bottom right hand corner of every video. Also please don't forget to click the little bell and set this to all that way you'll receive updates on any new videos that we do release in the future. Okay, so for this first video, we're going to talk about the frame, the autopilot and the motor setup and things like that. Now, I have already put this together mostly, but what we're going to do is talk to you about doing it. Now, everything I had here pretty much came from 3DXR in the UK. I just want to thank them because they have been supporting us in making this video and I wouldn't have been able to do it without them. So if you are looking for any parts for the Ardra Pilot, whether it be the autopilot or building a drone, please do check out 3DXR. They're a fantastic dealer and they will have pretty much everything you need. Now as you can see I've already got this set up mostly but I'm going to talk you through that rather than show you. Now the first thing to be aware of is the autopilot we're using is the Cube Orange and this autopilot is isolated internally on its IMU. This means that we can hard mount this directly to the frame. Now the isolation within the IMUs is built into the little cube and it means that the main two IMUs are isolated from vibrations that could happen on your setup. Now there are situations where that isolation might not be good enough and you might need to actually consider soft might in the controller. However, on a frame like this and most standard frames, as long as you've got a good prop setup that aren't too out of balance and you're using it very straightforward and there's nothing particularly unusual, the internal isolation in the Cube Autopilot will be fine. Now when I say I've hard mounted it, what I always use is sticky adhesive pads to hold my gear on and that is how how the autopilot is held in place. Now for this setup we've got the DJI 3... the 420 Lite series which is the end of their 2312 motor combination series. Now this is pretty much the same motors that you used to get on the DJI Phantom 3 and drones like that and it is a very reliable setup. Now when you are setting motors up on Ardra Pilot, you do need to do them in a certain order, whether it be a quad or a hex. Now this order is printed on the Ardra Pilot website and you do need to make sure that you get your prop rotation correct when you're doing it. Now with the DJI motors specifically, they are actually handed in the sense of they have directions printed on them that should follow for rotation. So when you are putting your motors on the frames, make sure that you do also follow that. When you do connect them into the ESCs you also need to be aware that you can place the connections in any position. If you find that you've done it and the motor is rotating the wrong way simply swap around 
two of the connections on your motor and that will then set them correctly but we'll take a look at that a lot closer when I actually do the motor test as well. Now the way the motors go in is obviously via the PWM connections into the back of the autopilot. The Cube or any Pixorb autopilot has one to eight main outputs as well as one to six additional AUX outputs. Now your main motors will go on your standard one to eight main outputs. Now because obviously this is a hex and it is six we only need to use one to six but you do need to make sure that motor order is correct. Now the way I do this is I actually label up the arms when I do this and I actually also put a mark on each of the servo connectors as well. So if you look on the frame you can see I've actually got it labeled as one, two, th three, four, five and six which is the correct motor ordering and my autopilot is then pointing towards me which is pointing between three on this side and five on that side. So you do need to make sure that you do your autopilot pointing the correct direction as per the description on the motor order on Ardropilot. And again, as I said, I labeled up the servo connections, so that allows me to make sure that I plug them in correctly. Now, when we dive into Mission Planner in a minute, we'll take a look at that in a bit more detail. Now, moving over to the power setup I'm using on this, I'm actually using the Mac PL series that I did a review on before. Now, if you haven't seen that video, please do check it out. I went over that and showed you kind of the features it has. The nice thing about using this is it's actually a dual BEC which means it supplies power for the two power inputs on the autopilot and that means I actually have BEC redundancy set up on this. So even if one of the inputs failed the other one is still there and the autopilot would remain powered. Now you can set up a third method of power in the cube via its USB port on the side if you wanted to. However, However, I don't recommend doing that because of the way that connector is in the autopilot. There is an opportunity to really do quite a bit of damage if that comes loose, but it is an option to do if you are burying your autopilot in a frame and it's not left out in the open like this one. Now, what we'll do is have a quick dive into what we've actually done under the top frame just to show you guys the actual setup with the power system and then we'll actually dive into the motor options on Ardropilot just to show you that as well. So just to give you an overview of the power setup, we have the main battery input on an XT60 coming into the Mac PL series current sensor, and then that comes into the baseboard of the F550 over here. Out from this point also is the little input which goes to the PL4 to 6S BEC. This is the same dual BEC I made the video on, so if you're interested in that, please do check it out. And this will not only take the current sensing input from the PL sensor, it will provide a power one and a power two output to my autopilot which is going to be the cube orange and it also provides an accessory 12 volt output as well. Now the nice thing about this setup is it will all integrate straight in with Ardropilot. I'll be able to have my voltage measurement as well as my current usage as well. Now as I did say I have done a specific video on this setup and if you're interested in that please do check that out. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video as well. So the next thing we're going to do now is actually take a look at Ardropilot. We're going to step through installing the firmware on the autopilot and we're going to look then through the basic configuration options which are the motor setup, setting up the ADS-B input because this is the ADS-B compatible cube as well as configuring the power input options as well for the power sensor so I'm getting the correct voltages within Mission Planner as well. Okay, so we've moved over to the computer. I've got the cube connected to my PC via USB. Now, the first thing we need to do is make sure we have the software installed to be able to upload the firmware. Now, for this, we're going to use Mission Planner. So if you go to Ardropilot's website and you can search for their Ardropilot's download section, and when you're on the download section, you simply need to find the Mission Planner folder. So if you scroll down from the screen onto Mission Planner, you then will need to download the Mission Planner for your 
computer, but make sure you download the drivers.msi as well. It's very important that you download the application and the drivers, especially for the newer flight controllers, because the Cube Orange, there's been some changes around drivers, so you do need to make sure you've got both. And you want to make sure that is if you have ever used this before, that you've got the latest drivers, because if you have got an older version, it might not work with your new autopilot. Now, there is also some information on this on the Cube, for instance, on the Cube Pilot website, and they take you through doing that as well. Now, we've got Mission Planner open, the Cube connected, so the first thing we need to do is install firmware on the flight controller. Now, if you've got a Cube, for instance, these now come with no firmware on board at all. So you will need to install something before you can even use it. Controllers from other manufacturers might have firmware installed already, so do take that into account. But it is always best to make sure that you've got the latest installed. So what we're going to do is go up into setup. First of all, we don't need to do anything up here around connection yet. And we're going to choose the vehicle that we want to put it on. So we've obviously got Rover, Plane, Copter and other ones like this. Now, because this isn't a brand new controller, I already have Rover actually installed on it. But we're going to install Hexcopter because that's what we're going to be setting up. So we're going to click on Copter, click on that, and what it will then do is download that firmware and install it onto the controller. It's asking us to unplug, click OK, and plug it back in. That should then detect the controller and then it will install the firmware on it ready to go. Now, if you're using an orange or a yellow cube, it should pretty much install automatically. If you are using a cube black, it might ask you to confirm if it is a cube black you're using or you're using another kind of flight controller, such as a Pixel, because those earlier devices aren't easy to detect always via the software what they are. The later devices are much better at doing that. So once your firmware is installed, you simply let it do its thing and then follow the on-screen instructions and give it a chance to reboot after that process has taken place. Now even when the firmware has updated don't rush to unplug the flight controller or the autopilot let it do its thing for a minute or two. I always tend to just let it sit there for a little bit of time just to make sure that it's done everything that it needs to do because what you don't want to do is unplug it too quickly before it's done its whole reboot process and set itself up ready to use. Now, when it has rebooted successfully and is connected, if you are using a cube yellow or orange, here is where we now have the ability to connect to it. Now, what we need to do is click on your serial ports and you will see this option come up. Now, for other types of controllers like the Pixhawks, it will simply say COM something PX4 or it might say Pixhawk or it might say Cube. For the orange and yellow cube specifically, you have two COM ports. You have a Mavlink COM port and an SL CAN COM port. Now you always connect via the Mavlink one. So what we're going to do is choose COM5 Mavlink, click connect, and then that will then connect to the autopilot and then begin to download the standard PRAM files that are installed on board. Now, if you don't know what a PRAM is, a PRAM is a setting on the autopilot. So what happens in Mission Planner or any of the software, when you connect your autopilot to it, it downloads all of the settings that are available on that autopilot to be changed. So your software doesn't have necessarily all of the settings in it. The autopilot holds all those settings and your software takes a capture of them and says, oh, these are all of the options that we've got available for us to do. So we need to, first of all, go under the setup area. We can't do the firmware because we've already done that. And then you've got your mandatory hardware area. And this is where we set up the basic configuration for the autopilot. And it is set up in multiple stages. You've got frame type, accelerometer, compass, radio, servos. So we'll step through each of these now just to get the main ones done. Now we won't do the radio one in this video specifically. I'll talk about that in the next video when I'm talking about radio systems. That'll be quite a short video but I will show you that one specifically. Now the first thing we need to do is set the frame type. Now here we're able to set what one we've chosen. So for us we're going to click on the hex at the top so we need to make sure we are on this one here and what that will then do is set the correct motor outputs to the positions on the autopilot. And remember, I showed you them before earlier. However, just if I bring that up, we've got the autopilot motor section. You can see that it gives us the motor ordering here. So if we scroll down for us, we were on hexcopter and I've gone for hex X, not 
plus I've decided to go with that configuration there and that's what I've got it set up to and as you can see that's the one we've got chosen on that row along there. Now the next option is Excel cor um, accelerometer calibration. Now this is an interesting one and actually I would strongly advise doing this before mounting your autopilot in your frame because it is 10 times easier to do and it's actually like this it's a lot more difficult because actually as part of this process you need to move the autopilot around into different positions so one piece of advice i would give you is if you are setting this up maybe do the firmware and all of this part of the calibration before you mount your autopilot onto the frame. If you have already mounted it, don't worry, you can do it. And we will do that now as well. So what we're going to do is say calibrate accelerometer. OK, so to do this, it says please place the vehicle level and then we click next. It then says place the vehicle on its left. So when you do place it up on its side, make sure you hold it there for a second or two. Don't just put it there and, and, and press it. Give it a second or two for the, uh, the, the IMU to detect. Place the vehicle on its right. Place the vehicle nose down. Place the vehicle nose up. Place the vehicle on its back, which is actually upside down. So we're going to just place that there like that. And that then says calibration successful. And now what that's actually done, and let me just untangle myself as I do this. What it's actually then done is calibrated the IMU so it knows the directions. Now on top of the Cube Autopilot is a little arrow and that arrow is the front direction. Now you can actually mount it in different positions and actually tell the software to do that. That's a bit more of an advanced thing. I'd advise doing it as per the directions on there and then you calibrate it like that. The next thing it wants us to do is calibrate the level. And that's nice and easy. We simply set it on a level surface like I've got here. And you simply say calibrate level and it tells us when it's done. And again, just make sure the surface you do have it on is completely level. Now, the next set of calibrations I haven't actually got set up yet. And we'll actually do them in the individual videos as I step through them, which will be compass, radio calibration, as well as servo output. When we're talking about other devices, flight ESC flight. Now we'll actually take a look at ESC on this. Now we don't actually have to calibrate these and I'll talk about that a bit more in a second because these are DJI ESC, uh, ESCs and they're already calibrated but we will take a look at that in a second as well. Now there is a couple of other things I want to do first before we do the motors on this and that is a couple of optional things. The first of them is the ADSB for the autopilot because I am using the Cube Orange. And the second one is the power settings for the power module that I've got installed because there are some things that you need to do there. So what we're gonna do now, first of all, is take a look at the ADSB. Now, this unit has got ADSB built in from UAVionics. Now we need to set this to on. And there's a couple of ways to do this. You can do it from within this area here, or you can do it directly from the PRAM files. Now to do this, there is a set of instructions on the Qpilot website, which I'd strongly advise you follow over here. So if we scroll down and if we go down to Cube ADSB in carrier board, on the Quadropilot web, sorry, Cube Pilot website, we've got all of the information for this one down here. Now, the first thing we will need to do is enable the ADSB in. Now, we're going to do this via the PRAMs because I prefer to do it that way. So, the first PRAM we need to find is ADSB enable, and we're going to need to change that to one. So, we've got it down here, but what we're going to do is go into the config, go to the PRAMs tree, actually, PRAMs list, I prefer, and we're going to search for ADSB. And actually ADSB underscore and then that'll bring us the settings. Now at the moment this has detected it's got ADSB and you can see that it is already set to one which means it's turned on so we don't have to change it but it is a setting worth checking. The next one we need to set the serial 5 board rate to 57 so we need to find serial 5 
And again, that's preset for us, so we don't need to do anything there. Serial 5 protocol, which is number one. Again, we're fine. And the next one is SR0. Now, this is an interesting setting, actually. This sets the stream rate of the ADS-B signal from the autopilot to the ground station. If your ground station is connected via USB, you would actually set it as SR0 to on. However, as this is mentioned by here, if you're actually going to be using this over telemetry data, so you're going to be using the UART connection, you may also need to set it to a number two for SR1 ADSB as well. And the reason for that is SR0 sets it over the USB telemetry connection, SR1 sets it over the telemetry port on the flight controller telemetry one. So SR0, we're going to just check that, SR0 underscore ADSB. And what did we want to set that to? We wanted to set that to two. And then we're going to click write prams. And then we're just going to set the SR1 as well. And we're going to set that to two. write the prams and that saves the setting for that one there as well. Okay, so coming back to this motor stroke ESC calibration. Now, because I'm using DJI ones, we don't need to calibrate them. They're pre-done from the factory. You can't actually calibrate them. It won't let you. However, if you were using other ESCs, you would simply calibrate them by following this process here. Further down, we do have some settings for the ESCs and you can change these as well. Now, you shouldn't need to touch these for the DJI ESC as a standard. They should just work fine out of the box, but you can set the ESC type here. So you've got your one shots, your D shots as well, if you are using it on something like that. For me here, we're going to use normal. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is check the motor order direction is correct and actually check that they spin up. Now, the first thing is you must must have your props removed when you do this. You do need to make sure your system is connected to a battery as well, because obviously the USB connection will not power your system to check the motors. You do need to make sure that you've got your power on. So we're gonna go down under the bottom here and we're gonna find motor test down here. And you have the ability to test your individual motors. At the top, we've got throttle position amount, so 20% and the duration the motor will run for. Now there is something to be very aware of with this screen. This does not currently align with the motor order you have set. So where's we set motor one, two, three, four, five, six, this is motor a, B, C, D, E, F. So there isn't a correct correlation between the motor test currently and the frame test because of the way the system is set up. Now they do explain this a little bit in the documentation down here and they actually show quad motor letter examples versus numbers and the reason for that is, is the way the actual autopilot software does it. And in the case of an X8, for instance, it'll spin the top right motor first, then the bottom left, and then process around. So what it does is goes A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. So what I'm expecting in this one is it to start somewhere by here and work our way around, and we'll do that now. And as we're doing this, we do need to make sure that the motor direction is correct for our prop order as well. So again, you want this screen up which shows which way your motors should be rotating. Now, for me, it's actually a bit easier because I'm using the DJI ESCs. So each of these, sorry, ESCs and motors, and each of these has the arrows on and I've got them in the correct places. So all I actually have to do is align up the direction with the arrow. But if you haven't got ESCs with arrows on, look at the screen. Also, sometimes I found it helpful to put a little arrow on the frame on the direction you need it to travel as well if you want to make yourself life a little bit easier. So the first motor we're going to test is motor A. I'm going to hit A. It's going to run for five seconds. I'm just going to gently feel it and it's rotating anti-clockwise, which is correct as per the arrows. And if we actually have a look on my frame, now A is actually number five and that is rotating anti-clockwise perfectly. I'm expecting B now to be this motor here. Perfect. And again, if we look at the direction, that one should be spinning. Let's just have a look. Counterclockwise for that one. And let's just try them again. So that motor is definitely turning the wrong way. 
that one is spinning counterclockwise but it should be spinning clockwise now to change that is really easy all you do is swap around two wires on the esc doesn't matter which two it is just swap two around so what we're going to do is unplug one and that one it's not as easy as it is without actually tipping it over we're going to pop you into there you into there do the motor test again and now that motor is spinning the correct direction and I can check it versus the arrows and I can check it versus the screen and you would continue to do this for each of your motors so we're going to go to C which should be this one and this will come around clockwise now as we go along the frame but there is a bit confusion when you look at it compared to the motor order which is actually out of place so I didn't actually feel that one so that one's going that way which I think is wrong we'll let him finish yes that one is wrong if we look at it compared to the frame we're on four and that should be counterclockwise so again we're going to swap around two wires on the ESC and I always just swap the left hand and the center wire is always the way I tend to do this one two do it again perfect and I would now simply follow that process all the way around my motors to make sure that I've got my directions correct but I've also then got the all the motors functioning as they should be again this will go clockwise so I'm just going to do these other three now just to make sure that we've got them correct and that is them all done so for me pretty much every one of these motors except that one I think it was was wrong but now we've got them right so when I confirm that versus the correct direction I know I'm going to get my props the right way I know I'm going to have my spinning the right way and this is one of the most important steps in any setup on any quad or hex or anything is making sure that your motor order is correct Okay, so the last thing I want to talk to you guys about now is setting up our power system. Now, as I said to you at the start, we're actually using the Mac system, and this is a calibrated battery system, and we do need to put some details in. Now, you will need to enable the battery system, whatever you're doing, regardless, because if you're using the power brick that comes with the cube, you need to set that up as well. Now, to do this, we go under config, sorry actually setup and we go under optional hardware and battery monitor and under here is where you set up what we're going to be using so we're going to choose the type of monitor that we're going to be using so it is analog voltage and current because it is going to be doing both we're then going to wait and choose the kind of unit that we're using now if you're using the power brick mini you'd actually just use the cube hv power module if you were using the original 3dr one you could choose that for us we're going to choose other because it is one of the mac systems finally you choose your autopilot version now you are a couple of versions here whether you're using cuav px4 a cube black or a pixhawk but at the bottom, do note that Cube Orange is listed differently, and this one did actually catch me out earlier as well. So make sure if you're using the orange that you actually select the Cube Orange, but if you're using a Cube Black or a Cube Purple or a Cube Green, you would just choose the Cube. So we're going to go Cube Orange. And the next thing we need to do is putting the little bit of data that Mark give us with their system. Now, we've got two settings we need to put in. We've got a voltage divider and an analog video. So on the voltage divider, we need to put in the, the amount, which is 26.85780. And I think I've already done the current, which is 19.86122. And that is then the voltage set up. So if we then go back to the main screen, you can then see down here, we've got the battery voltage and current display now showing. So it's telling us the voltage is 14.56. If I check it against my little one here, 14.52. So there's a tad difference, but I'll, I'll take that from the balance port to there. And it's saying 0.5 amp. So that is the battery setup done. Now, the next things you're going to want to go through is setting up your GPS, your compass calibrations, as well as the radio and things like that. Now, I'm going to keep them into separate videos because I want to do this in stages so the next video we're going to talk about is the radio setup and in the video after that we'll talk about compass setup on both standard like I've got connected here quickly on the i2c or this new can type compass setup and we'll also talk about dual compasses and dual GPS as well and what options you've got available around those 
And that is pretty much it for this video. Now, just to recap, what we've done is talked about our frame, our flight controller setup, as well as our motor order as well. We've talked about the power systems and pretty much got ourselves to this position here. Now, I didn't want to spend too much time actually showing you going through mounting all of this, but if you are having any issues on that, please do talk about it in the comments of this video and I'll try and support you guys through that as well. And as I mentioned, because we are using the cube, we are internally isolated, but if you were using a different flight controller, you might need to make sure that it is soft mounted. Now in the next video we're going to talk about GPS and compasses and specifically setting up dual cam based GPS and compasses on the new version of Ardracopter because there's been quite a lot of changes around this and there is some quirks or there was some quirks around the behavior of multiple sensors but that is being improved at the moment and we'll talk about that a little bit more as well. That's it for this video. Now as I said if you're interested in getting any of this stuff please do check out 3DXR in the UK. There's a link to them in the description of this video as well. If you found it useful, please do subscribe. Please hit that little bell button and you'll get an update on any more of the videos I make on this in the future.